Now, let me welcome on to the show Nevada head coach Steve Alford. Steve, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Before we get into your team specifically, I did want to ask you a little bit about the Mountain West uh, kind of as a whole. This is your second stint in the league, and the last time that you were here when, when you were with New Mexico, it was kind of the heyday of the conference. I think you could say there was about a three- or four-year stretch where you guys were getting four or five teams in. You know, we had Jimmer. We had Kawhi. You guys were in and around the top 25. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering um, – how good do you think the top of this league is and, and what is it going to take to kind of get back to the glory days, so to speak? Yeah, you know, obviously as the the conferences kind of changed with realignment and the takeovers and all that, um, the league has changed. You know, when I first got in the league, you had TCU, BYU, Utah um, on the league. So it, it was a little bit different league just as far as what the teams were. Now we've kind of settled in, I, I think, over the last six, seven, eight years, with this group of teams and schools. Um, and I think the cool thing is you've seen there's some young coaches in the league. Uh, there's some very veteran coaches um, in the league. And so there's a good blend. There's a good mix. Um, and, and I think that's made for a very competitive league. And in our two years here at Nevada, I've been very impressed with how the league is now, I think, evolving again since the realignment. And that takes, I think that takes some time when all of a sudden there's been a lot of realignment and, now you're starting to see, I think, the depth of our league and our league is starting to create that depth. And when you create depth, um, then the top gets even stronger. And from bids to, um, uh, to your seating, I think that all impacts everything. And I, I think this year, I thought last year was a highly competitive in a COVID year where we had no fans uh, and you're playing two games in one spot. Um, I thought it was a highly competitive league. And I think potentially this year's league uh, could be deeper still and better yet. So we're, we're trending in the right direction for sure. Yeah. And I think the, the best proof of that is two of the historically best programs in the conference, New Mexico and UNLV are not among like the top three or four teams in the league uh, right now. So I think great teams, uh, it, in order to have great teams in the league, you need to have great players, which is the perfect segue to talk a little bit about Grant Sherfield. Uh, his numbers kind of speak for themselves, 18 points, six assists. He led the team in steals. Um, I don't know if he's going to end up being an All-American. I do think that he deserves to be in that conversation at the very least. So uh, kind of just talk to me a little bit about him, how good he's been, and what you are expecting out of him this season. Yeah, he's just got – he's one, he's got a very good skill set, but he, I love his toughness. Um, he – he reminds me a lot of Aaron Holiday, um, who I coached at UCLA. They they carry a chip on their shoulder uh, because they're 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 not six five, they're not six six. Um, probably both of those guys. Um, we recruited Aaron awfully hard at UCLA, but I thought he should have had every Power Five conference team on his on his radar, and he didn't. So I, to some degree, both those guys were under recruited. Um, we've known Grant a long time because Grant was going to come to UCLA with us. And, uh, so to get him back, um, as a bounce back from Wichita, obviously newcomer of the year last year, did not made like three or four game winners for us. He's just got that toughness. He's got that, what we call it factor. Um, he's not afraid of mistakes. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, so I, I think his leadership ability is getting better and better. And that's gotta be where he's got to grow. I think when you go from that line of good to great, it's all about can you make teammates around you better, and that's where he's at right now. And if he can do that, um, he's going to be a great player, and it's going to really help our team. Well, if you're comparing him to Aaron Holiday, then he's going to be awesome. Aaron Holiday was one of my favorite players of the last decade. That dude was awesome. Um, so you mentioned the game winners, right? I've always thought the most dangerous teams kind of outside of those power conferences are going to be the ones that have really, really good veteran guards. And you have that with Grant and, and Desmond Cambridge in your backcourt. So – in your mind, how important is having that kind of veteran leadership in the backcourt, that veteran presence? Well, I think it's very important. And we're just going into year three, but this is really the first team we've had where I think we, we've got depth in every position. We've got size. We've got athleticism. Uh, and we've got a, a little bit of experience. Not great experience, but we got enough experience. We've got guys that have been through the league. We've got guys that have been through seasons. Um, I think you almost get a double dose of experience when you go through a COVID year because it's even – it's even more whacked up. So um, I, I think we've got those components and it, we definitely are. This is definitely our most biggest um, physical team that we've had. And 
so we can impose a little bit more. I think we can do that defensively. So how we develop at that end is going to be the biggest key. But as you mentioned, you get late in games, you get late in possessions, you got to have guys that can get their own shot. And we got that. And it starts with Dez and Grant for sure. But I think we're going to have others that can go create their own shot, especially up front. I think we're going to have guys up front that can create their own shot as well. So th- those are good things to have when you're late possession, late games. Yeah, it makes you look good as a coach when you can kind of say, all right, clear out, give Grant the ball, and go make us play, right? Now, one of those <laughs> things you don't draw up, but you take credit for drawing it up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, you mentioned your front court, and that's actually, uh, I think, it's something that's going to be really interesting to kind of see out, uh, see play out with you guys this year. Um, you probably have four or five dudes that deserve to really get starters minutes, right? And it's always interesting to me with teams that have deep front courts, because it's not like you get, if you have seven really good guards, you can just play small ball, run four of them out there at the same time and figure it out. You can't really roll uh, Will Baker out there at the three and kind of roll the dice on that. So how do you, as a coach, how do you go into a season knowing that you have a lot of guys that, that are going to deserve minutes and you can't always give, uh, give it to all of them what they deserve? Well, one, I think the, the competition has been great. And we're seeing that all the way back from April, uh, you know, we finally had a full summer this year of development, which was key. We didn't have that last year. So a big part of our development that we worked on with our bigs is being able to guard out on the court um, because we want to play them together. And we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of growth. Uh, now we got to wait till the season, to see how it looks. But we've seen a lot of growth that way. But, you know, you got Will Baker at seven foot, 245. You got Warren at seven foot, 225. You've got KJ, 6'10", 225, 230. Um, Dre Henry. Uh, who played some last year for us. Um, A.J. Brahma is somebody we got in the transfer portal that um, uh, has great athletic, maybe our best athlete on the team at 6'8", um, and can score it and rebound it. And then you got Nick Davidson, who we're very excited about as a young player from modern day. So we've got guys up front um, that we haven't had and guys that are going to be able to play both uh, what you would call the four spot and the five spot. And I think we'll play them together. I think we can really get big and long and physical. And um, so, but a lot of that's going to be our development defensively. So let's talk a little bit about Warren Washington. I've heard some people mention that he could kind of be the guy that could quote unquote break out a little bit this season. So what have you seen from him this off season and, and kind of what has he gotten uh, gotten better at? Yeah, I think Warren has just matured. I, I think he had to come in here and sit out a year. That's always hard. Um, and, but he did a good job in that sit out year of working and developing. But then last year, uh, he was obviously in the rotation and got a lot of playing time. And, and we saw him start, especially the end of the year. I think you look at his last 10 games, he really started to come into his own. And now he's just continued that in the summer. Um, he just carries himself differently than he did in year one. And that's what you want to happen. Uh, he's much more confident. Um, he understands the workload that goes into getting better and he's done all those things. So we're very excited about one Warren's development and then what he could do this year, because he's, uh, I think he's really worked on his game in all the areas. So I got to make sure I hit all the buzzwords in this interview, right? We talked about veteran guards. We talked about breakout guys. Now I'm going to throw you a, a potential X factor. Will Baker guy that was a former top 40 recruit, um, ended up at Texas on a team that had three guys that were drafted in the front court in front of him. Tough for him to get minutes there. What have you seen out of him? And is, do you think he can end up being a guy that can kind of, I mean, he's going to give you a different look. He's a different player than what a Warren Washington is, right? Yeah. And that's um, the nice thing is with Grant and Will, we had a pre existing relationship because I recruited both of those at UCLA. And uh, Will really came down to UCLA and Texas and stayed home because he's from Austin. And you know, so to get two individuals, they're kind of bookends. One's the front court and the other's leading the back court and the team. Um, to have those guys and you already have a relationship with them before they ever get here, I think really helps because that trust factor is already kind of built in before they get here. But Will is somebody that we're going to be able to play inside out. He shoots the three extremely well. He handles the ball very well. He, I think his greatest trait is how he passes the ball. When you've got a seven-footer that can pass – the way Will can pass. He's got great hands and feet. There's a lot of things you can play off of him. And I think we've got we got some bigs that are going to really be hard, I think, to defend one-on-one. And if we can – if just through that, and obviously having Dez and, um, and Grant, and then you look at Trey Coleman, you look at Keenan Blackshear, uh, Alam coming back now, Daniel Foster, who we, only, we didn't get till mid-January last year because of injury. We got some big, experienced guards that – 
those rotations are going to be favorable to us if double teams happen. And I think we got some bigs that can create some double teams. All right. I'll end it with this. Nico has got Colorado State rolling, right? San Diego, San Diego State's always going to be good. UNLV's got guys. Uh, Richard Patino is down at New Mexico, right? Boise State, you always know it's going to be tough to play there. If we look up in March and Nevada has won the Mountain West regular season title, what has happened? What has to go right for you guys to be league champions at the end of the season? Yeah, I think probably like everybody, you got to stay healthy. Uh, you don't need major injuries, so you got to stay healthy. Um, how we develop. I love how we've developed since April. Our guys have been on campus. They've worked hard all summer. Uh, so how we how we get through October, you know, we had a major injury last year in Daniel Foster that really slowed, I think, what we were going to do and having him back. Right now we're, you know, we're 10, 11 deep. And so are we going to be that way in March? If we can, if we can continue to develop, that's going to be huge. I, I think the, if you're asking me for one thing, if we can impose our will defensively, then I think we've got a shot because I think offensively we've got a lot of weapons both inside and out to present a lot of problems for defenses. So if we can gel as a unit, grow as a unit, and really become a team that can impose ourselves defensively, um, we're going to be one of those teams that should be there in March. Well, Coach, listen, I appreciate the time, and I'll let you get back to making sure that you can get that defense up to par. (laughs) I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me on. Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. That was Nevada head coach Steve Alford, and I am now joined by Chris Murray, a longtime beat writer for the Wolfpack, who is currently working for Nevada Sportsnet, and Sean Paul, who runs the website Making the Madness when he's taking time off from his day job as a reggaeton artist. What's going on, gentlemen? How are we doing today? Doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well also. Thanks for having me. Uh, So, Chris, I want to start off with this. It feels like from the outside, that there is a reason to be really, really excited about this Nevada team. Grant Sherfield is a stud, and we're going to get into that. Desmond Cambridge can really play. They're adding a kid that averaged 20 and 10 from Robert Morris, and I don't care what league you're in. If you average in 20, 20 and 10, you're going to be a player. So your boots on the ground there. What's the buzz like in Reno for this team right now? Oh, okay. A lot of buzz. I mean, there's a lot of buzz with this football team and this basketball team, but basketball specifically, I mean, you bring it back all five starters from last year. You're adding Will Baker, a, fi- a former five-star recruit coming from Texas. You're adding A.J. Brahma, who, as mentioned, was one of the most productive players in the nation, you know, regardless of conference, uh, before he opted to transfer. And they have Keenan Blackshear as well, an FAU transfer. So you basically have the majority of your rotation from last year. You add a lot more talent in terms of transfers. They have a couple of high school recruits they're really high on. Nick Davidson, his uh, dad and mom both played sports for the Wolfpack. He's at a modern day, an area that Coach Alford did a lot when he was at UCLA. They have Jalen Weaver, who's the top recruit out of the state of Colorado as a, a combo guard. Um, so this is a team that should be much deeper. They obviously have the star power. They have a lot of experience. They're in year three. Uh, you know, of Steve Alford. So uh, they have everything that he wants in terms of the roster competition. And I think the expectation after kind of being more like CBI kind of team in the last two years is to make that leap, not the NIT, but up to the NCAA where Eric Musselman had this problem before he left to go to Arkansas. 
Yeah, and it feels like that should certainly kind of be the level of expectation for this group, right? Especially with how good the Mountain West has a chance to end up being this season. Before we get into that, Sean, I do want to ask you, you wrote up a big profile on Grant Sherfield uh, during the summer. And so just kind of take me through what, what, what makes him special? Why is he so great? And why should America know who this kid is? Yeah, I mean, he has a great work ethic. And anybody you talk to that knows Grant would say that. Like, he works extremely hard. Uh, you know, his parents were both educators, so he just learned a lot from his parents and they just taught him how to be a hard worker and he loves basketball. I mean, that's what he wants to do and he wants to win at the highest level and he knows he's a leader of this Nevada team and he knows he's a real difference maker at the end of the day because when you have a star player like him who hit three game winning shots last year, he's just what makes a team go from good to great and making the NCAA tournament and I think that's a real difference maker for this team. Where, Chris, where does he kind of stand in terms of the talent that we've seen come through Nevada in recent years, right? Like they had the Martin twins. They've had some really good players when Musk was there. Uh, where, where does he kind of stand in the eyes of Wolfpack fans? The guy he reminds me of the most would be Ramon Sessions, played 11 years in the NBA. He was never really a star of his team, unlike Grant. And Nick Fizikas was the star of that team. Uh, a kid named Kevin Klee made it to the NBA from that team. Uh, so he was surrounded by really good players. Marcellus Kemp was the number two all-time scorer in school history from that team. The thing with Ramon and others similar to Grant is that he, there's not a lot of weakness game, right? Grant can shoot the three. He can get to the rims. Great assist to turnover rate. He can play pretty good defense. He's got pretty decent size for a point guard. So not a lot of weaknesses in that game. When you look at taking it to the next level, can be an NBA player. Um, you know, I, I'm sure what the standout skill is, but I don't think anybody thought Ramon was going to make the league, let alone play a decade there. So he just knows how to play basketball. He's a very good basketball player. He was voted a captain of this team prior to last year when the team didn't even know if he was going to be eligible to play because he was still going through the trans process and trying to play immediately. So that shows you how much respect and the kind of leadership skills that he has that his teammates looked at him in that manner. So, you know, he might not necessarily be the Martin Martins just in terms of the charisma of those guys and the uniqueness of their story, but he's a really, really good player. He is going to be one of the better players in the, the West Coast. Um, you know, Jalen Harris also came out of that kind of class of Eric Musselman and made it to the NBA as a rookie last year with the Raptors. So he's kind of that next guy that if Nevada is going to have a next NBA player, it's going to be great. Yeah, and I think if you're going to be a team coming out of the Mountain West that, that really gets attention and kind of makes a run, you need that superstar, and it's really good to have that superstar at your point guard. The the the, the college game is a guard's game, and I, I do think that it matters. Um, speaking of which, I always love teams that have two really, really good guards on them. Nevada also has De Desmond Cambridge. So, uh, Sean, where does this backcourt kind of rank kind of in the pantheon of uh, Mountain West backcourts? And just how good do you think these guys are from the perspective of kind of the big picture of, the, of college basketball nationally? Yeah, I think it's the best backcourt in the conference for sure. I mean, you look at a team like Colorado State, they have some they have a solid backcourt with Isaiah Stevens and Kendall Moore and Chandler Jacobs, more of a wing kind of guy, but he's versatile, so that's what makes Colorado State so good. And San Diego State with Trey Pulliam running the point and Matt Bradley coming in from Cal, that's kind of the top three in the conference, and they probably all have the best backcourt in the conference. But when you have a guy like Rand Sherfield, 18 points per game, six assists per game, and three rebounds per game last season. Desmond Cambridge, who can absolutely light it up from outside. Just finding that extra consistency is a big thing for Cambridge. But overall, I mean, when you're looking at backcourts in the country, this is probably like a top 15 backcourt in the country just because you have a guy who can drop 20 any given night with Cambridge and Sherfield who can do the same thing, but he also makes his teammates better. I mean, that's just what it comes down to, and that's what makes uh, winning teams really good. So – Chris, the question that I have with this team, well, there, there's probably two, but I think the biggest one is how is Coach Alfred going to navigate the depth that he has in his front court? There are probably like four or five guys for two positions, maybe one position, depending on uh, on how, how much he wants to play small ball. I mean, we mentioned uh, – Will Baker coming in. We mentioned A.J. Brown was going to be there. K.J. Himes is there. Warren Washington was the, the third leading scorer on this team last season. There are a lot of bodies up front. How do you navigate that? Yeah, that's going to be a big question for him. I think the thing with Coach Alford, he likes to play two bigs. Like, you know, he doesn't mind shooting a lot of threes and playing a more modern style of basketball. Son Corey, who's now the head coach 
at Huntington University uh, was very much pressing him to shoot as many threes as possible because he's kind of an analytically minded kind of guy. But uh, Coach Alford is going to play two bigs. Now, whether it's Warren Washington, A.J. Himes, or Will Baker's in there, A.J. Brahma probably could play the three, but he best fits as kind of an undersized four who's you a lot of mismatch uh, uh, opportunities. Um, you know, I think Warren Washington is a huge piece of this team. He's a kid who started at Penn State, started his career there, didn't didn't play a ton, uh, super athletic seven footer. So Nevada can play really fast with him. He's not going to go out and shoot a lot of threes like you might see from your modern band, but um, I think he's a guy who could really blow up and be all comps, be one of the best centers in the league. You look at KJ Himes, they've tried to develop him as a stretch four at six foot 10, six foot 11. Uh, Will Baker, you know, did not have a lot of success at Texas, but Coach Alford has said that they've really retooled his shot they think he can come in and hit a lot of threes as well. So, um, you know, I don't think Jay Brahma is signing with Nevada unless he thinks that he's going to get 25 minutes per game. So you got four guys there who all they're going to get about 25 minutes per game. So we'll see how that settles out. But I think the good thing for Nevada is they don't just play one big time. Like they're more than comfortable putting two seven footer on the court at the same time, because all of their bigs are athletic enough to run the court and defend multiple positions. So I think that will, help in terms of that log jam up front, that the fact they can play two of them together and still function offensively and have enough spacing. Yeah. And I think it is important to note that Steve Alford did have success at New Mexico playing big guys like that when it was, uh, what was, what was Aaron, Kirk, Aaron Gordon, Alex Kerr, Cameron yeah. Barstow. Yeah, yeah. All those guys. Yeah. I mean the weird twins that you say, like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're not going to do a small ball lineup with Brahma at the four, but I think they're all going to have a true center. And I think your second guy, they don't mind, you know, putting out a KJ Himes and a Warren Walton together. They did that a number of times last year. So um, I think there'll definitely be situations where you might even see Warren Washington uh, out there at the same time as Will Baker, two true set footers, which you don't see a lot in college basketball anymore. Right. Uh, the other question that I have with this team, Sean, is what they're going to do at the three spot, right? It's kind of obvious they, they're going to, whoever the bigs are, they're going to have a couple of them out there at the same time. Desmond Cambridge, Grant Sherfield, they're going to get their minutes as well. But who kind of slots in there at the three? Who do you think is going to be in that spot? Yeah, I'd go with a mix of Trey Coleman and Keenan Blackshear. Blackshear uh, is the brother of former Florida and Virginia Tech player Kerry Blackshear Jr. So a lot of basketball pedigree there, but he's a good defender. He's a big guy, and I think he could play the three very well for this team. And Trey Coleman, 6'7", and can really shoot the ball from outside and press as a freshman last season. So I think that's probably the route you're looking at. Maybe Daniel Foster, who was a freshman last season, got a lot of minutes during his freshman year also. But I think as the depth grows on this team, you're looking more at like Trey Coleman and Blackshear occupying that three spot with Sherfield and Cambridge at the one and two, uh, Warren Washington, Will Baker at the five, and then a mix of whoever, uh, Brahma at the four. You're, there's a lot of different options. That's the big thing about this team. But, you know, with KJ Himes and Warren Washington down low, they both struggled with foul trouble last year. So having more options at the four and five could really help this Nevada team, you, you know, play more free on the defensive end. Sean, let me ask you this too. So, I think that the top of the Mountain West is going to be really, really good. I think that they probably should have three tournament teams. It's Nevada, San Diego State, and Colorado State for me. I probably would have Nevada third. I don't think that you can really argue with putting any of those three teams in any order. I know you have them second, so let me ask you this. What has to happen for Nevada to go out and, and win the Mountain West Conference next season? You need more. Con you need some more consistent play down low from your four spot. I feel like Will Baker is the real difference maker for me, along with KJ Himes. Both are really talented players, and Will Baker wasn't the 35th ranked recruit by accident. He's a really talented guy. It just didn't work out at Texas. And you look at some of the guys they had on that roster: Jericho Sims, Kai Jones. He was he got the seventh most big men minutes on the team in 2019-20. He started the season at Texas last year, but transferred before the season really got going. And you look at last year's Texas roster, they had three guys who were selecting the NBA draft at the forward spots with Kai Jones, Jericho Sims, and Greg Brown. So it just wasn't going to work out there and obviously had a good relationship with Steve Alford because UCLA made his final two originally out of high school and Alford recruited him. I think he's a real difference maker for this team because he can shoot the ball. He's comfortable with the ball in his hands. He's athletic. I think if he can fit at the four next to Warren Washington, that would make a big difference because they'd be the only team in the Mountain West to play two seven-footers and their skill sets complement each other very well. All right, Chris, we can wrap it up with this. 
what what would the Nevada fan base consider a successful season for this group? Obviously, there's a certain level of expectation, um, but it's still a team that's playing in the Mountain West, right? So what what needs to happen for this this season to be considered successful? NCAA tournament. I mean, I think you look at what Must did, and he pushed him in the top 25. They were top five in the nation his last year, getting to a Sweet 16. Uh, they had had that success with Trent Johnson, with Mark Hux from 2004 to 2007 and then they didn't have it for a decade and then not back they don't want to have to work back to where they were in that dry period so i think anything short of an ncaa tournament berth is going to be a deployment i think that's why people were so mad with the non-conference schedule the non-conference schedule is not great nevada's probably go out and win 24 25 games they might have to sweat out selection sunday because that non-conference schedule so i think people's expectations are such that this is a team that has enough talent to the big dance and if they don't get there because the schedule is not up to par non-conference-wise, that's why they were really upset. And so, you know, they obviously want to go out and win a championship. I think if you made them pick them the two, they want to get back onto the national stage. They have the talent to do that. They have the coaching to do that. They maybe don't have the schedule to that, so they're going to have to go out there and win a lot of games. I think that's a fair expectation that if they do not reach the NCAA tournament, I think a lot of fans, a lot of the players, and a lot of the coaches, you know, will, will feel like they did not get as much out of this season as they could have just based on the roster. Well, I, I certainly do think that they do have the horses to be able to make a run, not just in the Mountain West, but, you know, they can get to the tournament, maybe even win a game, depending on how things kind of break for them. But anyway, Sean, Chris, I really do appreciate the time, and thank you for helping me break down the Nevada Wolfpack. Pack.